Okay, so in this uh, lecture, I'm going to go over um, basics of heat transfer. Um, so we'll go over these key, sort of answer these key questions. What is the difference between heat and temperature? We'll look at how uh, heat energy is um, transferred within, um, particularly with the focus on um, heat transfer within a building environment. We'll look at the, the basics of the electromagnetic, electromagnetic spectrum, so you get a sense of um, different what different wavelengths refer to. Um, we'll look at the difference between sensible and latent heat, which is a really really important aspect of HVAC. Um, and then finally, we'll sort of apply that some of those principles and just look quickly at um, the basics of the vapor compression refrigeration cycle. So basically, how air conditioner, how a heat pump, how a refrigerator works, um, and sort of tie all that all these concepts together. Okay, so. Um, Temperature and heat um, are actually two different things, even though I would say a lot of people uh, sort of conflate the two terms. Um, but uh, as energy professionals, you should know the difference between the two. Okay, so let me adjust my camera there. So temperature is the average kinetic energy of the molecules of the substance. So if you recall from a previous discussion, um, thermal energy is the vibrating molecules in a substance, right? So everything around you, if you look around you, wherever you are right now, um, everything around you has a temperature above absolute zero, which means the molecules are vibrating. The temperature is um, really just the, the average kinetic energy of, the, uh, of those molecules. In other words, if you heat something up and increase the temperature, right, so you take a, whatever, a laser thermometer or a thermometer and it, the temperature goes up, when that happens, those molecules um, start vibrating more, right? So they have more kinetic energy. And that's what temperature is. So as that temperature increases, those molecules vibrate more. As you drop the temperature, those molecules slow down. And if you think about like the whole thermodynamics of it, um, when, when it's hotter, it has it has more energy. So it's sort of almost, you can think of it as like filling it up with energy, right? So it, it gets all this thermal energy and it gets those molecules excited um, and then as it cools down, it sort of, they calm down and they, and they vibrate less. So the, the sort of overall average um, kinetic energy of any given molecule in that substance is your temperature. So temperature is, um, it doesn't, it doesn't depend on, it's not dependent on size, right? So like, I have this little pen here, um, and the temperature of that, let's say this is, 60 degrees or whatever and then I have I don't know this bowl that I have sitting here right so if this is 60 degrees they're the exact same temperature it doesn't matter how how big they are it doesn't tell you how much it doesn't tell you how much energy they have per se it just sort of tells you the average uh, vibrational energy that they have whereas um, heat heat is the total kinetic energy in a substance so it's the total kinetic energy of all the molecules in the substance. So if I have, um, okay, so I have like a bowl here and a spoon, right? So if I have 80 degree water in both of these, okay, so I have this little, you know, teaspoon of 80 degree water and then, you know, whatever, a couple of cups of 80 degree water. They're the exact same temperature, but the, the water in the bowl has more total heat because it's there's more of it, right? So it's the total energy, the total thermal energy in that um, substance. And you know, there's a couple of practical applications of this, but I want you to think about this as an example. So in on this image here, and let me use my little laser pointer. Um, we have a um, boiling a gallon of water. And then over here, we have a giant iceberg, which is obviously frozen. Um, okay, so we have a big frozen iceberg over here, and then a gallon of boiling of water. So which of those, I want you to think about, which of those is a higher temperature? Press pause, think about it. And then I want you to think about which of those has more total heat in it. Um, feel free to press pause and think about that. But, of course, the boiling water has a higher temperature. Right, it's boiling. It's at least around 212 degrees. Um, whereas, even though the um, iceberg is a lot 
colder, so less temperature, because there's so much of it, there's actually more heat in there, okay, so there's more heat in this iceberg than there is in this boiling water. Because the thermal energy, okay, so the total heat is the total thermal energy, so heat is the total thermal energy, and even though it doesn't have much thermal energy per molecule, there's so many molecules that there's a lot more heat in there, okay? So that kind of gives you an example of the difference between temperature and heat. And as I'm sure you know, heat is constantly transferred um, all the time, all around you, all the time. And there's three ways that it's transferred between substances. So this is a review, um, but feel free to press pause and see if you can think of the three ways. So first we have conduction, which is direct physical transfer. Okay, so conduction is direct physical transfer. Convection is heat traveling with the fluid. I'll go over examples of this here in a minute. And then we have radiation, which is the third way, which is when it travels in waves. Okay, and it must be in the, in the line of sight. And it doesn't require fluid. It doesn't require physical contact. Okay, so conduction is um, when two um, molecules are touching and they physically... Um, transfer the heat to each other. So again, if I have, let's say, this glass here, okay, so this is a little glass, let's say I have ice water in here, okay, and then the, uh, let's say the glass is, you know, 50 degrees. My hand is about 65, 70 degrees, so when I put my hand physically against the glass, my hand feels cold. That's conductive heat transfer, so that feeling of coldness is actually the warmth from my hand traveling into the glass. Okay, so that's the, and if you think about what's happening with thermal energy, you have these vibrating molecules, my hand molecules are vibrating, and then the glass molecules are vibrating less because they're colder, right? Remember, less kinetic energy. So when they put them together, it's, it's actually physically transferring that vibrational energy to the glass. Okay, so that's, that's conduction, and it happens it, it can it does it's not just with two solid objects a lot of people think it's just like well you put a, something you know a cold object against a hot object yeah but you can have conductive heat transfer with um, liquids and gases and so forth it just the key is it needs to be touching and that's how it transferred the energy um, then we have convection so convection is when the heat travels with a fluid um, most of the time that involves um, warm air rising okay so if you think of like um, uh, you know, uh, well, here's a good example here, your fire, right? So if you have a hot object and you have this air currents, these warm air currents that are rising up from it, okay, that warm, you almost think of it as like a bubble of warm air, and that's taking the thermal energy with it as it rises up. Okay, so that's um, convection. And then radiation, and we did talk about this um, briefly last week, so radiation, remember, Everything that has any temperature at all, so anything above absolute zero, radiates energy all the time. Okay, so radiant energy, it travels in waves. Okay, so it's electromagnetic, electromagnetic radiation. We'll go over the uh, the different types of EM radiation here in a minute. Everything around you right now, if you look around you, including your own your own body, your everything radiates energy in all directions um, all the time. Um, the hotter the surface temperature of the object, the greater the radiation that it emits, and the more the different wavelengths, which we'll sort of talk about in a minute. Okay, so radiation doesn't require a fluid, and it doesn't require physical contact. And if you think about sunlight, there's sunlight has to be all radiant energy. Right? Like the, the energy that we get on the Earth is all radiant. If you think about it. It's, there's there's nothing in space. It's a vacuum, right? So there's no air. There's no convection in space because there's no fluid. So air is a fluid, by the way. Let me back up for a second. So air is a fluid. Um, so that's why you can have these convective air currents. But in space, there's no fluid. There's no there's no there's nothing. It's a vacuum. So the only way for the sun's energy to travel to the Earth is to is to um, radiate and in, in, in the form of electromagnetic 
magnetic radiation. Um, but, the, you know, more closer to Earth, you know, we deal with EM radiation all the time. You know, the light coming out of uh, the lamp is electromagnetic radiation. Um, uh, when it actually impacts the indoor air comfort, um, because if you're standing next to a cold wall, for example, um, and you've probably experienced this, if you, like in the winter, if you stand next to a really cold wall or a cold window, and if you stand just next to it, right, so you're, you're, you're you know, a couple inches away from it, you feel cold, and it's not because of the cold air coming in from the wall, it's because that wall is so cold that you, are, so you're radiating energy to the wall, and the wall is radiating energy back to you, but since the wall is so much colder, um, you're, overall, you're losing heat to the wall, okay? So that feeling of coolness when you're standing next to a really cold surface um, is actually radiant heat uh, loss from your body. And if all the walls in a, in the, like the ceiling are cold in a room, uh, people will feel colder because of that radiant heat loss. So there is some other practical implications for radiant energy. Okay, so those are our heat transfer mechanisms. Um, so radiant energy is electromagnetic, electromagnetic energy. It's the same same thing. Um, so I just want to briefly go over the, the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, and so the, basically the way this works is the hotter the object is, okay, so the hotter the surface temperature is, the shorter the wavelength. Okay, so this electromagnetic spectrum, we have a big, uh, larger wavelength over here. So this is one meter, right? So one meter wavelength. So these are just these big waves traveling through the air. So we have like radio waves are about a meter long. Um, well, AM radio, FM radio, okay? And then this is one meter. So a microwave oven is, uh, it looks like it's about a, a centimeter, okay? And then we get down here, we're down to a millimeter, 10 to the minus 3. Here is a micrometer. So this is like, um, it's hard to see, but bacteria, virus, they're a micrometer, a little less than a micrometer wide. And then we get down here, um, um, nanometer, picometer, and so forth. So... The hotter the object, the shorter the wavelength. Okay, so you can see like the um, visible light, the visible spectrum is right here. Okay, so this is what the sun peaks at. So the sun surface temperature um, is around, I think, ten thousand degrees Celsius, um, and so it emits visible light. That's that's its peak uh, wavelength, which is like. Um, a couple of hundred nanometers. Um, what we normally think of as heat radiating out from like like our bodies or even a um, a fire or something like that, that's more in this infrared spectrum. Okay, and you can see this is cooler, right? It's it's a lar it's a larger wavelength, right? So it's a larger wavelength. Than visible light, because um, so you think of like your body, right? We're emitting infrared radiation. That's what your skin emits mostly. That's because your skin is cooler, you know, a lot cooler than say the surface of the sun, right? So as you as the surface gets hotter, those wavelengths get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, and a couple other things worth remembering. Um, anything above absolute zero radiates energy. Okay, so again, anything above absolute zero radiates energy, and the hot, the hotter it gets, the more it radiates. Shorter wavelengths are more powerful. Um, if you think of like uh, like we have infrared, which is just thermal energy, you know, it's warmth, it feels kind of good, frankly. Then we have visible spectrum. That's the stuff that our eyes have evolved to perceive. No big deal there. But then we get down to these shorter wavelengths, like ultraviolet. We know that ultraviolet is damaging. Um, we know that x-rays can be damaging, gamma rays are really damaging, so the smaller wavelength um, are, are sort of more powerful, more potentially damaging. Right, yeah. So, as I said, the sun is mostly, it peaks in the visible spectrum, whereas we're mostly infrared. So just to give you an idea 
of um, the fact that there's these different wavelengths and the wavelength depends on the the temperature of the object okay so the ones we deal with in this class really are your visible spectrum um, uh, your infrared spectrum and a little bit of UV or if you have some concerns about UV but primarily visible and infrared okay so I'm actually going to stop here for this discussion um, and then I'll pick up with latent and sensible heat in the uh, next one